So we got extra information relating to Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. Now this information is coming from the PlayStation blog and I wanted to do a little bit of a summarization of everything that we have learned new because this blog is relatively long so you know I did not want to go through it all and just simply read it out and instead I decided to summarize it you know just to make it a little bit more compact experience and you know just kind of makes sense and all the big details and interesting details relating to the Horizon game. So, Nexus is a studio known for its PC port on the PlayStation games. Recently announced a different kind of a project, such as, of course, as we know it, <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, for both PlayStation 5 and PC. So, it's a collaboration with the Guerrilla Games, the team has been working to revamp the beloved title, with a focus of improving features and, a, of course, the technology. In their initial announcement, Nixus highlighted several key enhancements. Now, these include a new sound mix created by Gorilla's audio team, supported for the DualSense controller, and the introduction of the new motion capture technology for in-game conversations. Now, they're providing a closer look at some of the specific changes at the team behind them. So, one of the standout aspects of the remaster is the overhaul of the natural environment, particularly for the foliage. Patrick Blagensi, a he's basically a senior environmental artist, explained how the team brought the vegetation in Horizon Zero Dawn up to the quality standards of Horizon Forbidden West by upgrading shaders, textures, and of course geometry. They significantly improved the foliage interaction with the environment. Hundreds of plants, trees, and bushes were updated, especially in areas like the rainforest biome which now boasts enhanced bi biodiversity, particularly along the riverbanks. This improvement brings the game closer to the vision depicted in the original concept art. Now, Julian Hoffman, another environmental artist, uh, emphasized the collaboration with Gorilla. They they compared the Horizon Forbidden West foliage to the remaster, setting clear visual goals, such as ad addition of the new generation of mods to the game's environment. These foliage improvements have breathed new life into the game, making it feel more vibrant and alive. Now, Nexus also made significant strides in enhancing of the game's living world. Brian Van Noonan is a senior technical game de uh, designer. He described how they reworked the village, cities, and of course the outposts, filling the previously empty areas with more non-player ca characters and PCs. And thanks to the PlayStation 5's increase of the memory capacity, they were able to increase the number of the NPCs, adding a variety of their uh, schedules, actions, and interactions with the environment. Now, in one example, a woman now feeds geese at the well in the Meridian. Reusing existing animations could create a more lifelike atmosphere. The remaster also saw a complete upgrade to the terrain, objects, and of course buildings. Using next generation materials from the Horizon Forbidden West, the tech art team, led by senior technical artist Sander Broch, Karsts? Oh my goodness, I apologize if I'm butchering so many names. He basically replaced all the terrain materials in Horizon Zero Dawn. While the new materials didn't always match the original aesthetic, the team carefully tweaked each one to maintain the original feel while improving visual fidelity. Notable upgrades include deformable snow and sands as well as the rebuilt high resolution textures and geometry for the settlements like Meridian and Date Tower. This attention to the detail extended to the buildings where custom tools were developed to generate more detailed geometry. And the remaster also revamped building blocks, the individual assets that make up the game's world. These assets, whether natural or man-made, saw improvement in texture resolution and level of the detail. The team even performed a separate pass on all made assets, upgrading buildings with more detailed geometry, enhancing realism and of course the immersion. Uh, one of the most noticeable upgrades in the remaster is the addition of over 10 hours of new motion capture data for in-game conversations. Now this is significant. This extensive overhaul was directed and captured by Gorilla at their motion capture studio in Amsterdam. Mark Basilmon, senior technical artist, explained how Nexus integrated this data, processing nearly 2,500 motion capture files with new tools they developed to improve animation flow and, of course, the detail. These tools allowed animators to fine-tune scenes in Maya and make necessary adjustments to facial animations, finger movements, and body language, resulting in more realistic and expressive conversations. 
Alexander Georgiev, he's the animator, emphasized that importance of tools and ensuring smooth animation also of various of the character types. For instance, characters of different height of builds required careful adjustments to maintain visual consistencies. Uh, custom scripts were uh, developed to fix issues like shoulder and arm clipping, allowing animators to focus on enhancing the character's performance. Now, Nexus and Gorilla Lighting teams collaborated to revamp the lighting for both the world and the cinematics. The remaster uses Horizon Forbidden West's Nubus Cloud system for a dynamic cloudscape, while improvements in voxel cloud rendering were introduced uh, for the Frozen Wilds expansion. The lighting overhaul aimed to retain the strong mood lighting from the original, while also benefiting from the new technology that enhances the global lighting across various biomes and, of course, the environments. The lighting for the conversations and cinematics was rebuilt from the ground up, with upgraded rigs for more realistic character uh, illumination. This included a five light system for better control over the key, profile, and rim lights. These changes dramatically improved the game's atmosphere, allowing it to align with the visual direction of the Horizon Forbidden West. Now, the character models in Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered also saw substantial upgrades. Aloy, the protagonist, received significant improvements to both her adult and child models, incorporating more detailed hair, skin tones, and of course the facial expressions. Peach fuzz and new hair shaders were added to give her a more of a cinematic look. In addition, the companion characters now react to the environmental changes like the weather, which was previously limited to Aloy in the original game. On a broader scale, the remaster has given more attention to the smaller details, bringing the world and its characters to life with a new level of realism. Now, the teams at Nexus and of course the Gorilla are excited right, to share Horizon Zero Dawn remaster with the players on both PlayStation 5 and PC. So the game features a range of visual and technical improvements, from enhanced foliage and lighting to more like lifelike characters and of course the animations. Players will be able to relive Aloy's journey with all these new upgrades, of course that will be coming on the October 31st. And for those who have already owned the original Horizon Zero Dawn, or even its complete edition, there's an option to an upgrade to the digital remaster for just, well, basically $10. So it really is up to you to decide if you would, you know, consider to say uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is really necessary for it to receive sort of a remaster at this point. In some cases, I say this is a lot more significant than I anticipated, but also some of the details I already have anticipated that will be present here. And I'm kind of glad the way we actually even finally got an opportunity of seeing this sort of remaster. Nevertheless, it's up to you to decide if you, you know, care about this sort of a remaster or not. Of course, judge with your wallet. And again, thank you so much for watching, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys all, and have a wonderful day.